Greetings, my name is Piero and welcome back to the Neon Slice. This will be the start of my new series in which I play the entire Dark Souls Remastered game. And along the way, I will be trying to teach you and um, give you some tips on how to get into uh, Souls games if this is your first time ever playing the game. Uh, I'm going to be giving you some tips along the way. I'm going to be editing this video so it becomes a little bit more watchable, so it's not super long. Um, so I actually encourage you to play the game if you actually want um, to learn yourself and, you know, get a, an experience firsthand. But you can use this uh, as a sort of, like, a um, guide on, you know, some pointers, uh, if you will. Uh, but ultimately, you the best way to learn is... To experience something so to experience the game so i'm gonna be uh giving you some tips along the way as like i said so let's name our character um i'm just gonna be simply neon slice and i'm gonna be a male um if this is your first time ever playing the game i should i suggest you start as warrior uh, or knight uh, whichever you prefer or you know that's my recommended but of course you can be anything you want in dark souls 1 uh pyromancers and uh, um, spellcasters like sorcerer, pyromancer, and cleric are extremely overpowered, but they're more complicated to get into. Like you have to learn a lot of things. Um, if you're, if this is your first time, you have to learn like how to get pyromancies, how to power up your pyromancies, or how to get your sorceries, where to go, quest lines, and such. If you want a more laid-back uh, experience, I suggest warrior uh, for your first playthrough. This game wants you to play more than once so you can do multiple playthroughs with all these different characters but yeah anyway i'm going to be doing a run with sorcerer i'm going to be teaching you showing you how easy this game is with a sorcerer uh it's so much fun it's a different experience but of course it's the same base game i'm going to be also showing you how to make the best sorcery build that i've come up with it's extremely overpowered dealing tons of tons of damage to players and um enemies so let's create our character all right here we have our character um he is uh ryan reynolds uh with long hair um but yeah anyway i'm starting off with uh my gift as m the master key so i can open simple locks so you should also pick that if this is your first time playing i'm not going to be watching cutscenes play the game yourself if you want to experience the, the story i 100 percent suggest you get into the story of this game because it's really great. So I'm going to start off by unequipping my broken sword because that's... I don't even know why that's there. It doesn't do anything. Um, so this is the tutorial area. So you're um, you're pretty uh, you're pretty good if you read these, these messages. They teach you how to play, the controls and all that stuff. Also, the first, the first tip I can give you is to use a controller, even if you're on PC. Um, you can play this on my stone keyboard, but it's extremely difficult. Um, I suggest, I suggest you, you use a controller. I am using a PS4 controller on PC. So we're gonna open the door here. Uh, we're gonna see the first boss, the tutorial boss, as in every Souls game. Don't try to fight him with your broken sword. You you won't do anything. So bonfires reset your health and your and reset the enemies and they also make you respawn. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Hopefully I get to Yeah. Plunging attack. There we go. So with sorcery this is easy peasy. You just gotta know how to position yourself. Oh, he managed to hit me, wow. There we go. Easy. An important thing to note is that you can't heal while moving in Dark Souls 1. So, uh, a thing that I advise everybody, not just newcomers, is to, uh, well, Aside from talking to all, all of the NPCs, um, as soon as you get here, level up. Uh, I need 14 dexterity, so I'm just gonna up that right now. So the thing, this is one thing that I advise to all the players of Dark Souls, new and old. Do this run that I'm doing right now. 
grab everything from Firelink Shrine. And you need the master key to do this. That's as your starting gift in the beginning. So grab everything from here. This is necessary so you can get a head start in the game. It includes a little bit of a sacrifice though and risk. So the way you proceed uh, quest lines is by talking to characters, just exhausting their dialogue and pretty much, you know, keeping track of what they say and what they do so you can follow them around. So for example, this guy will d eventually position himself uh, in the catacombs to proceed with his quest line. So do that, get, get these chests. This is important, we need uh, homeward bones. That's the main thing that we need. So I'm gonna equip my homeward bone here in my inventory. This is essential. You don't have to do this, but if you wanna do it like I am doing it to get a head start in the game, uh, just uh, do this. Uh, these, these enemies don't die, so don't try to kill them. Just dodge them with your shields out because uh, they, they respawn. And this is the strategy that I, that I recommend everyone do. After we've grabbed two souls from there, there's like two or three souls, um, like souls, soul of a warrior or something like that. I'm gonna go through here. There's another soul right here. Again, this isn't necessary. This just gives you a head start. Souls are used to level up. So they're like your money in this game. So after that, I'm just gonna go down here. And since I have the, since I have the uh, homeward bones that we picked up and the master key, I can open some doors that otherwise wouldn't be able to be opened. I'm gonna send this back up. All right, so in the corner right here, there is a soul right there. And then after that, we go down the staircase. And up here, outside, there's another soul in the Valley of Drakes. Now, this is a, this is probably the most difficult part. Um, it's difficult because I always forget which one it is that we need to pick up. Pick up. We're basically collecting souls before getting to these areas, so we get a head start in the game. All right, there's the soul of a proud knight. He doesn't wake up unless you pick those up. That's the Astora straight sword. Um, it's a it's a faith weapon. Uh, so if you're doing a faith build, that's okay. But if you're doing a faith build, I recommend doing dexterity, uh, not pure faith weapons, because it's just not it's just not that good. Anyway, and now the final step to our head start strategy is to head down into New Londo ruins. With our homeward bone equipped, I'm pressing down on the D-pad to select that after equipping it in my inventory. Then I want to break this, grab the item here. I want to see the blue torch, that means the merchant's here. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, I'm running, by the way. There's going to be ghosts that you cannot harm, so don't worry about them. Do not worry about them. Let's just run past them. Don't get hit, because they have a long, long, re long reach. And then right here, right around the corner, watch out, you may fall. Grab this item, and as soon as you grab the item, homeward bone. And there we go. That's the end of the strategy. Uh, it's a bit difficult, so if you're a newcomer, you might die a few times. That takes a lot. That takes a lot of skill, actually. So if you're a newcomer, you may avoid all of that um, anyway after we've uh, gotten the firekeeper soul we give it to the firekeeper so we have a strengthened healing flask so our Estus flask plus one and that concludes the start of our uh, strategy before we actually start the game so I'm gonna use all the souls that I've gathered you don't have to get the firekeeper soul I guess you can skip the firekeeper soul part um, but you are depriving yourself of extra healing, so... Anyway, that gives us 5k. It's supposed to give us about 7k, but I'm doing it this way. Uh, I'm gonna increase my health, I guess. Actually, we are going to increase our strength to 14. Because I know I'm gonna need the, uh... I'm gonna need the, uh, the Uchigatana. 
this isn't the best optimal way of doing this, but this is just how I'm doing it. Just to show you that you can mess up. You don't have to be perfect about everything. If you're interested in knowing what to level up, um, if you're first starting off and you pick the warrior class, just level up your highest things. Uh, vitality is your health, so always have a, a, a big vitality um, bar. Just always keep that in mind. Oh. As you can see, these are lesser enemies. They're they're weaker, so they, they move slower, so we can get behind them and backstab them. So targeting and then just running around them is the best way to deal with them. There we go. I should have probably open the door before I actually came here. There we go, parry him. There's a soul here. So I'm starting off with level 12 already. We should be at level 20 very soon. I'm gonna ignore these guys because they're just here just to annoy you. I'm gonna pick up the rubbish because that becomes a Titanite chunk later on. We only need one more rubbish. We only need one rubbish, sorry. So fog walls usually mean boss fights. Uh, but since the the developers know that that's what you're gonna think, they just sometimes put fog walls to scare you. Um, they're also like mini loading screens. So if you see a fog wall, it probably means you will be encountering something big, like either a boss or a difficult area of the game, or just simply a scare, just to scare you. So keep that in mind. They, they mean something, but they also don't mean anything. <laughs> Most of the time. You don't have to do exactly as I'm doing, by the way. You This applies to every build. Like I said, you don't have to do sorcery. You don't have to, you know, just be what you want to be. I'm just giving you some tips. After you sit down. There's some guys behind me. There's gonna be a dude right here. Jump scare. Also, never R2 unless you know you're gonna be able to recover. Because R2 does deal more damage, but it also uh, makes you vulnerable. Um, this guy sells something very important. Uh, the web the repair box repair box repairs uh, makes you repair your items at the bonfire um, It's very pricey you can choose to do it, but I Don't recommend you do it here, but definitely but definitely but you did you can definitely farm this area and get 3k But in for just because I, I'm making a video. I'm just gonna murder him And also he has the weapon that I need I don't recommend you do this. I mean, actually... I actually recommend you do this, to be honest. Because uh, he charges too much, and you can get his weapon. Now, don't think you can do this with every character, by the way. Uh, you do get penalized for killing NPCs, so I don't recommend killing NPCs. That's the only NPC that I recommend you kill. If you, are, if you do plan on... Uh, killing him and not buying the things that he needs that he has but you can either collect the money and buy his stuff or kill him he does not drop the repair box though you have to buy that from him if you want i hope you understood that because it's it's a, i know it's a lot of it's a lot of word vomiting but uh <laughs> basically you you don't have to kill him if you don't want to you can buy his stuff farm souls and buy his stuff or just kill him and uh, take the risks of killing him. I prefer killing him because I know I'm not going to need him for anything else. Uh, the repair box is sold by the blacksmith later on. 
So right now I have my Uchigatana, which is going to be my main weapon for a long time until we get to an Orlando. So it's a good investment for now. So if you did kill the merchant or if you bought his key, you'll be able to open uh, some of the doors in this area. Which I highly recommend. Acquire the residence key if... Whether it is by killing him or uh, buying it, you need that residence key 100%. You 100% need it. So, can't stress this enough. You don't have to kill him, but I recommend you kill him. Um, yeah, so killing NPCs is not a good idea, but that one, it's okay. You can get away with that one. The reason why it's not a good idea is because you don't get to progress their quest lines, and which normally end up giving you rewards. There we go, our first use of the resident ski right here. This is important because we get to use the gold pine resin, which is the main reason why we get that. This is how you one-shot the boss, basically. So this is the first real enemy. He's very strong, but he can also drop one of the best weapons in the entire game. So, this is where we'll learn about parrying, okay? There's not much I can do without, you know, practice, making you practice it, so I, I recommend you practice it yourself. But anyway, in able to parry, you need to have an empty hand or a shield that can parry, like this one. So, this Black Knight uh, is probably the easiest one to parry. So characters that are like that have a sword and a shield are usually the ones that are easier to to parry. Uh, I'm gonna be parrying him. I'm gonna be pressing the L2 button or the left trigger button as soon as he he's about to do this. Uh, so I parry him. So I'm gonna show you. Hopefully I get to nail this. But if you mess up, it's fine. You can mess up. I will probably mess up. Like yeah, there we go. So there we go. So the moment he's about to. Huh? There we go. I'm not even gonna move, I'm just gonna press L2. There we go. Just lock your eyes onto his sword. Literally, do not move your eyes away from his sword. So let's see if he drops a weapon. He didn't. That's very sad. Blue tear stone ring. We're gonna equip that. It's pretty good. Pretty good ring. Uh, to have uh, starting off. Like one of your best starter rings. There's a trap here going up the stairs. And then I'm gonna come back down. When he lights it up. Oh, nice. Loincloth. I will wear it. I will wear the loincloth. Um, you can open this, but don't go down there yet. Uh, Havel's down there. He's one of the main mini-bosses in this series. He drops an amazing... He drops an amazing ring called the Havel's Ring, which increases your weight capacity, so you can wear heavier armor. So endurance makes you carry better things. Increase your weight capacity. And also gives you stamina. Tiny lizards like that one disappear eventually. So kill them before they disappear. Okay. First boss. This is the first boss fight. So before we actually kill the boss, we go up here and kill these annoying guys. Because they'll just shoot us throughout the whole thing. There we go. Slide down. And once we reach the part where the bridge is broken, buff. And this is a bit difficult, so I will probably get be hit by him. He has stupid lock on. I'm probably going to die here. There we go. 
and he's and he just he just died anyway don't get cornered but if you do get cornered I guess he will back off and uh, <laughs> jump off the edge uh, yeah so this weapon the gold pine resin makes your weapon deal a ton of damage as you can see 254 right there and he's weak to lightning so that's why we need gold pine resin that just makes that entire boss fight super easy you just have to survive through it um, whatever this guy says, just tell him yes. He's pretty much the icon of this game. So you, you may, you may know him. So he will give you the white soapstone to be able to play online, to get summoned by other people. So you can co-op. Remember this, uh, remember this, this door. So as soon as we reach the, the, the thing, the bridge, I'm just gonna run, 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 super fast, run, super fast, run, super fast. And down the staircase right here. Sometimes you get hit by the fire. It's okay. And then go into the, this hallway right here. And voila. We kick down the ladder. You can go down the ladder. Uh, actually, I'm just going to go down the ladder just to show you. So you don't accidentally step off. And uh, yeah, there we go. We're back to the bonfire. We're going to level up. Um, I'm going to... I want to level up my health. Just so we get that out of the way. Bring your health up to 14 if you're a noob. Um, or 20. And then you can focus on everything else. I recommend uh, leveling up either strength or dexterity. If you're doing both. You know. Uh, always bring, have them on the same level. 14, you know. 14, 14, 14, 15. So your main stats should... For the, for, for the, for the most part, they should be at the same, the same level. So I'm going to stand here. Uh, I'm going to stand behind this pillar until the dragon comes down. You just got to have patience and wait for the dragon to come down. And then after he comes down, I'm just going to rush to that bonfire that you see at the, at the end. There you go. And we need to do this before he actually closes. So I'm going to activate the lever right there. And he's about to breathe fire in here, but that's okay. We're just going to move out of the way. And then we light up the bonfire. And that's our new checkpoint. Luckily, he won't kill us immediately. Um, and there we go. We, we set our waypoint. Uh, and we're gonna grab this thing right here. Because we actually need some of these things. The claimer is a really amazing weapon, by the way. If you're, if you're a, a noob, I recommend it. If you're doing dexterity and strength, or just dexterity. I do believe it scales with both. Anyway, um... I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. So, thank you so much for watching, please leave a like on this video if you if, if you found it helpful. Uh, I'm sorry, it's really difficult to uh, play and teach at the same time, I usually just play and then talk, but um, I hope you found it helpful, and uh, stay tuned for more. Uh, leave a like again th to tell YouTube that this is a good video and more people drives more people to the channel and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye